This video is one of a series of how-to videos that we at Lisaga have put together to assist you in the field. In this video, Lisaga will show you how to remove the travel stops on our variable springs. These springs are unique in the industry. First and most importantly, Lisaga uses only pre-relaxed spring coils. Secondly, our blocking devices are both adjustable and reusable. And thirdly, you'll find no bolts and almost no welding on any of our spring cans. The result is a higher quality spring that requires less labor to manufacture and thus remains price competitive. You've come to know that Lisica makes the best built products in the industry and we thank you for your continued support. In this video, we will show you the steps required to properly remove the travel stops on a Lissiga variable spring support. It is important to understand that you should not remove any of the travel stops until all of your supports are installed and in their correct locations. All of the pipe insulation and jacketing has been installed. The distance from the pipe center line to the support is dimensionally correct and all hydro testing has been completed. The steps required to remove the blocking are slightly different depending on whether the support is a floor type like this one that goes below the pipe or a hanger like the one you will see on the screen now. Before we go through the steps, let's talk about the blocking and how the blocking device works. The Lisaga blocking is a unique design in that they are adjustable and reusable. By rotating these tabs, we can adjust the blocking to match the location of the plate that rests on top of the spring and to insert the blocking into the slots. If you need to re-block these springs again in the future, you can adjust the blocking at that time to match the new spring plate location. Make sure if you do reinstall the blocking that the blocking you have matches the full travel of your support. Now. Removing the blocks will usually require a slight adjustment to the spring force. When the downward force of the piping system and the upward force of the spring are equal, the pressure on the blocking will disappear and the blocks will literally fall out. So if you're in a location where falling or dropping things is a danger, then the first thing you need to do is find the help of a co-worker to assist you. The next thing to do is cut the bands. Be cautious when you do this as the blocking may pop right out. If they don't, see if the blocks will come out with a slight pull by the hands. If they do not come out by hand, you will need to manually adjust the spring force of your support. You can shine a light between the blocking and the slot to see where your load plate is resting. If the plate is pressing on the top side of the blocking, then turn the load tube counterclockwise so it moves in the upward direction and compresses the spring further, allowing the spring plate to move downward. If the load plate is resting on the bottom of the blocking device, this tells you to turn the load tube clockwise so that it moves in the downward direction, allowing the spring plate to move upwards. So how do we turn the load tube? You need to find a strong bar like this one that fits in these holes. Sometimes you may need an additional extension to gain some leverage depending on the size and the type of variable support you have. This is done by inserting completely through the tube and turning clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, Let's remove the bands and remove the blocking from this unit. Now that the blocking is removed, your unit is in operation. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to remove the blocking from a hanger as opposed to a support. When it comes time to adjust the spring force, a spring hanger is different from a support in that you will twist the turnbuckle instead of the load tube. 
Same as before, when the downward force of the piping system and the upward force of the spring are equal, the pressure on the blocking will disappear and the blocking will fall out. Some companies order the blocking attached to the spring with stainless steel chains like these. This is to keep the blocking and the cans together at all times. If your spring can does not have these chains, then once again, we would recommend that you find a coworker to assist you at this stage. The next thing to do is to cut the bands. If the blocking does not fall out, see if the blocks will come out with a slight pulling of the hands. If not, then it's time to manually adjust the spring force. Depending on the hanger design, you will either find an extra turnbuckle located down here in your hanger rod, or if not, then you will always find a turnbuckle located up here just inside the spring can. Just like the earlier video, you will need to get an appropriate size bar, lever, or screwdriver to twist the turnbuckle. Throughout the entire process, it is important to maintain full thread engagement at all times and all locations in the chain. This means you should always see two to three threads on the inside of every turnbuckle, clamp, and eye nut. Look up and down the spring from the spring can to the clamp to make sure you always have full thread engagement at every connection. If the load plate needs to move down to free the blocking, then twist the turnbuckle clockwise. If the load plate needs to move up to free the blocking, then twist the turnbuckle counterclockwise. It's just that simple. Remember to keep track of how many turns you made on the turnbuckle so that you can return it to its original position after the blocks are removed. Once again, we would like to thank you for your time and attention. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Go Vols!